Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another another Nintendo podcast. My name is Danny Tortelli as your host today. I am joined by Austin Cummings. Hey, Danny. And Matthew Schultz. Hi. And today we are talking about, oh, a little game called Skyrim. Just kidding. It's Pokemon. It's all yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, wake up, just... nerd. Skyrim is dead. The future is an electronic mouse Pokemon. His name is Pikachu. He's a dear friend of mine. He's all I have now. Be watching us when we sleep. Mm -hmm. But anyways, that's more than enough hopping into the news that we're about to get to in a sure. second. The classic but Pikachu hop. Go for it. We should celebrate that we are all rejoined. Avengers mm -hmm. Assemble. We are Yay! all in the same place again. Yeah, this um, is very true. It is good to see you, Austin, Matt, uh, you know, you as well. I mean, I've um, had a great time chatting with both of you individually but it's nice to like <laughs> mm -hmm. and i've had a and screen. i've had a fine time doing it hey <laughs> let me ask you this uh we make the avengers comparison no episode of amp is a, is complete without some total offhand uh you know tangent on avengers but for, to keep it pokemon themed uh because everything i do now it, in life and that's it is pokemon themed uh oh, if fuck. one of us reach one of the starters uh which one which one of the three starters would we be if you had to choose. Wait, wait, wait. Sword and Shield or all time? No, like the, no, the Holy Trinity of Marvel? I don't know like... Sobble. I don't know. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> I don't know the names of the other two. Um, the, okay, no. Of Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle. Matt, what are you? Pika, pika. Oh, Bulbasaur. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting stuck with that? Who gets to choose last? Oh, no. He said Squirt it. Squirtle. He said it. I was, Squirtle. Okay. Uh, I'm putting an asterisk next to that squirrel uh -huh. squad. All right. right, I would say I'm Charmander. It's okay, my and cup I would is be green. Charmander. Thanks for joining us for A and P episode. Um, okay, wait, very Danny, good. who are you? I missed that. You said Squirtle. <laughs> Danny, I just want to uh, make sure you confirmed you were Squirtle. Squirtle. Uh, Squirtle fall squad on that sword signing in. And shield uh, for mm -hmm. you. Uh, Danny, tell us a little bit about what we'll be talking about today in this episode. Wow, so today there is a, a quite a bit of Pokemon news. So some things to keep in mind. Um, next week is the Pokemon Direct leading into mm -hmm. E3. Um, that is specifically just going to be covering Sword and Shield. It'll be a 15 minute uh, thing. Um, it'll be on June 5th. So I say next week as if you're not gonna be watching this next week or two weeks after it actually airs. But um, yes, that's when that's when our direct will show, um, right. or the direct will show. Um, today, May twenty eighth, day of yep, recording, um, mm -hmm. was a Pokemon press conference. Now, right. this press conference just ever so slightly touched on the direct next week, and also covered a a, uh, a, a quite a cornucopia of other things too. Um, Mm -hmm, across the mm -hmm. whole Pokemon company, all the different media that they are involved in. Right. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a gist of yeah, what a little different, uh, today is. a little more is. kind of uh, investor-focused, so it was not quite yeah. as much like when we get into Direct Risk Game, Game, Game announcement. This had some more like, hey, this is how we're uh, excited about this market and appealing to this many phones. Um, and kind of as such, right away from the outset, we kind of saw them exhibit that because I was uh, surprised by the fact that for the first few minutes of this fairly short uh investor conference uh that was both in not even both japanese english and chinese uh and then eventually it switched to whatever native language you're watching the video from but they did uh, have the translations and pausing for uh the translations to all three of those languages and uh, which was you know different and interesting and i think it kind of strikes for me as one of the first times that stands out to me as a time when uh chinese uh translation was prominently featured in a nintendo related uh video mm -hmm. of any kind you know it's common when we see nintendo direct where one of the developers um or even miyamoto or whomever will you know speak and then we'll have like uh, bill trenton for a long time did some of the the the, the via voiceover work and uh but in the case of this we had also the chinese uh which was cool and they talked about the fact that, that is a big focus for their mobile markets yeah and the very first game that'll come out there being pokemon yeah. quest but we can get to that and i actually think this is probably a perfect segue we'll just move that next um but first and foremost as always 
Hmm. Matthew, can you introduce us to our favorite segment here on the show? Oh, I thought you were going to make me read something for a second. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Pig Ann in the News. Today, news that I know nothing about. So I'm going mm-hmm. to be just like a, maybe any average Nintendo fan viewer or any viewer, anyone at all, please. Mm-hmm. Um, just be yourself, Matt. I've, just always be yourself. I didn't see this. To, truthfully, <laughs> I didn't even know this was happening today. One of my staff members told me, oh, yeah, the Pokemon Direct was today. I'm like, there's no Pokemon Direct today. And then they, you're like, I go ahead and see yourself out the door, Scrub. <laughs> scrub Normie. <laughs> they were referencing uh, this press conference. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to hear yeah. about all the news and then quiz you all on uh, different um, aspects of yeah, it. Yeah, and so, you know what? what they happened? were they yeah. were very right because, honestly, it, it had the feeling of a Direct even for me. And they, there were fun announcements in there. And yeah. um I might just jump in and say really fast, like when we were prepping for this episode, I sent you guys a Nintendo Direct that came out uh, two years ago when they had Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon at E3. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of that, even the for the 2017 pre E3 show, like there was very little announced that talk about the fact that Pokken Tournament at the time was announced for Switch and that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were coming out. um, And that was basically the extent of it. And, you know, we never they they were very kind of cagey on what Ultra Sun Ultra Moon were going to even be about. Yeah. And that was it. So in many yeah. respects, this today was more information we got than we did uh, at that time. So it's very, you know, exciting. It was a lot of fun to sit and watch uh, and yeah. in the same vein as a really good Nintendo Direct. Yeah, and, and they covered quite a few different things. Um, so we'll actually start diving into it. We'll go off of um, one of Austin's uh, last comments a moment ago, just talking about how they really did go out of their way to incorporate the the Chinese market, mm-hmm. something that, um, to my knowledge, hasn't necessarily been a huge thing that they've really focused on in the past too, too much. But what they did, they brought out the head of uh, the, I think it's the studio, NetEase Games, mm-hmm. um, and they are working on the publishing end of bringing Pokemon games to China, starting with Pokemon Quest. Um, Pokemon Quest, uh, we know, came out, I think mm. that was late last year mm-hmm. uh, at mobile. So they're bringing a, a, essentially a souped-up version of that um, to the Chinese mobile market. Um, but it sounds like, from what I gathered, NetEase may be um, doing a lot of the publishing end of bringing other Pokemon games outside of just the mobile market to China. Yeah. Um, it's interesting in that so. respect. We talked about a few weeks ago on the show that uh, that it had been announced for Nintendo proper, so not Pokemon specifically, because as we know, yep. but it's often a little confusing that for Pokemon, although Nintendo is a, a part owner in the property, it's also co-owned by, we have Creatures Inc., Pokemon Company, Nintendo, Game, Game Freak. Freak, they're all involved. Yeah. And so... Um, because of this, it's kind of a joint thing. Like we, when we think of Pokemon Go, a game I love, but Nintendo doesn't have their hands in it in any form. Um, and, but the in the case of this, for that Nintendo announcement, the Switch would be sold in China. We saw the stock rise like thirteen uh, percent almost immediately. And you know, China has been traditionally highly, highly restrictive of any type of uh, access for uh, people within China to to either get onto uh, the internet or th- things they consume uh, kind of and so as china has kind of opened up more so in the world stage from an economic um partnership standpoint in recent years they've also opened up some of their entertainment uh, accessibility and as such the pokemon quest game uh is kind of the first did you guys play pokemon quest at all on switch and then when it came to mobile no no i have not H- have you austin I did, I did, because I just, as you see that name Pokemon on there, and you know I'm going to get that thing on Nintendo Switch. Plus, I want to have that little box on my Switch icon that has these, yeah. like, you know, Pokemon that are all, like, kind of, they're cube, cube-ish. cube uh, They all look like... You mean what, the, Lego-ish? Yeah. Oh, they came, that came out on the Wii U, you're saying. You know, and like the Tsum Tsum? No, 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 it was on Nintendo Switch. It is a Wii U caliber oh. game, and that's a dig, but uh, <laughs> it is for the Switch, and then it came out on wow. mobile a little after. I, am I thinking of yeah. Rumble that had that, You like, are, you cube, are, and that's, like, come, that's okay. just come to mobile uh, as well. Oh, okay. And mm-hmm. I do have many of the Rumble figurines in case anyone doubted it. Never doubt it again on this nope. show. Pokemon Quest, the way it worked is you have Pokemon, they have very basic forms, geometric kind of cube look to them, kind of like a the Tsum Tsum, which are the stackable, to, like kind of plush toys that are geared towards, uh, I assume, children and then just enthusiastic 28-year-olds who just love a good, love to see a character <laughs> in pillow yeah, form. Yeah, but, um, 
in any event, it looks like that. And the game kind of played itself, which made a good fit for mobile, but kind of frustrating on the Switch, which is that your character is kind of automatically traversed a very simple level and you'd kind of tap along and it had various mobile restrictions. Like you'd run out of energy and you would either wait or uh, complete a microtransaction to uh, kind of repower your Pokemon. And it's kind of a slow collection game, which of course Pokemon and much of gaming is all about anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But it didn't really grab me, but it came out for free right before um, Pokemon Let's Go did. So it was kind of a fun holdover to have a Pokemon game on the Switch. What I found funny about the, or interesting at least, of the China announcement is that this is called, it's Pokemon Quest China Edition. So they're really leaning right into that it's special. And it has a ton more content. It is PvP which mm -hmm. is neat. Um, Pokemon Go introduced PvP at the end of last year, and that's been, people have been super into that. And the, uh, mm -hmm. so that's been a fun little addition. But they, yeah, they're rolling out tons of new features and really gearing it towards China. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of lands, particularly because um, they also made big announcements about other mobile games that for me are more interesting. Uh, but it's yeah. uh, curious that they would keep Pokemon Quest going, a game that I hadn't really heard about again. Yeah, and it, and it could be a good segue, you know, kind of like a light entry to to kind of test the market, entering the Chinese market with mm -hmm. it. Uh, this all all in all, uh, the work with uh, Pokemon Company and NetEase Games could probably be a huge boon for Pokemon, probably for Nintendo as well, only because of these other projects that we're about to get into, um, uh, just as they try to get in there a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's just a huge huge market for stuff like that. Um, so so they announced the, how many oh, projects was it that they oh, announced? Oh, we are we are gonna dive right into like, it here. Give me oh, give me a number. Two. Like what am I expecting? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Matt, you and all One, the listeners of AMP can two, listen. Look forward to three, four ish. Four. Danny's like our five. certified counter on the pod, so he'll get us a good uh, number <laughs> rolling up here soon. Let's go to our counter. And a lot mm -hmm. of them are very. Uh, uh, some of these projects are very much tied to one another. Um, and okay. it'll just make more sense more sense after I get into it. Um, well, these are all Pokemon branded uh, products, I guess you could say, that are coming out that they announced. Mm -hmm. Products, projects, uh, the whole kit cool. and caboodle. Yes. All right, let's get let's let's keep going because so I am excited. First and foremost, um, Detective Pikachu will be getting a sequel for what? the Switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa! Wait a minute. So per <laughs> the is. statement, the Detective per Pikachu the statement, game. Pick yes. Not a port, a sequel. Not a port. So, well, so well, let's let's hold we'll on to see. that thought for okay. just one yeah. second. The official the official report. Hold the release you. of Pokemon Detective Pikachu movie has left fans wanting more of the famous Pokemon so Sleuth. True. Creatures <laughs> Inc. has plans famous to create Pokemon a new Sleuth entry in the Detective Pikachu. Pikachu video game series for Nintendo Switch. The original Detective Pikachu game for the Nintendo 3DS ended on Show a cliffhanger, and this upcoming game will be a conclusion to that story. The details of the game are still a mystery. There he is. So keep checking Pokemon.com for more information. So, yes, um, they. I don't, don't know what that cliffhanger that. is. Uh, for all we know, Detective Pikachu is literally hanging on a cliff. Um, but that Ooh. is exactly where the sequel is going to pick up on in the Nintendo Switch. Um, so, so let me uh, yeah, can I jump in with something really fast really fast never it is never is really fast okay so <laughs> did either of you see Detective Pikachu yet yes not yet not yet okay. oh, oh, come on I've seen. it was phenomenal I love yeah, it he went without me right he went yeah. without me they call it the right. new Avengers Endgame the um, <laughs> we should do we sh Danny you should see it and we should talk about it but I would say broad strokes it's a really fun kind of buddy Cop, mm -hmm. uh, comedy Super that's funny. done really well. The writing's good. The creature design is awesome. How they adapted it for the movie, and the movie the looks is there. great. Um, yeah. Like it has a really great look to it. Um, it has, I would say, as a critique, the final act is like off the rails as far as like the villains plot. And there's so much like just constant exposition from characters being like, "We remember when we did this? Well, we did this to get this because we're going to this." And remember, this is why we're doing this. Like, there's so much of that because you yeah. don't feel that they had confidence and like, wow, we've. Uh, the audience is going to understand on their own where we're at, right, and so right. things are really explained because it's it's a ham-fisted ending. But, but it's, a, it's a it's a children's movie so for sure. It's a children and also children. enthusiastic young twenty-eight-year-old men, which we've already <laughs> established. Check out my Sum Sum collection. I mean, the, they um, did nail it. Yeah, but it's totally fun. And I enjoyed it, but I would say the ending was like something I was not as hot on. And it's funny because I I have the game for 3ds. Uh, I did not beat it because it is painfully slow. It's cute. It's made by creatures. Um, mm -hmm. So when we think of the the arms of again of Pokemon, whereas Game sure. Freak we know is also making uh, Town later this the year, and they line. made the excellent uh, Pocket Card Jockey on 3DS. Like they, 
this that was a mm, creatures game right. for uh detective pikachu and it's a though there are detective elements to it kind of a la phoenix wright ish they're very simple it's very uh geared at certainly the young audience it moves very slowly and um but that game originally was supposed to be released episodically and that's mm, how it was released okay. i believe in japan but i could be incorrect on that and then when it came to america it was just this one oh. game so i actually didn't even know there wasn't a proper ending but it's funny because in the conference they say like and for Detective Pikachu 2, it'll end differently than how it ended in the movie. Like, they even say that mm-hmm. one note, <laughs> making it the second strangest thing they said during the conference. The other was when this one guy came up initially, and he was like, hey, I just want to let you all know that I've been, you know, appointed to the board. If it if it passes, I look forward to helping. And also, Godzilla will be in theaters uh, in two days. Not related to and Pokemon, I, but go check yeah, it out. Yeah, my company also <laughs> helped make that, too. Um, what? But the, and then the next guy's like, well, thanks for that. Totally unrelated Godzilla comment. Anyway, back to Pokemon. <laughs> the real Jack. The real Japanese creatures that right. we connect with now. The um, anyway, so Detective Pikachu did enjoy it. It is cool. It's coming to Switch. How, okay, what do we think? Do we think it is Godzilla's the, coming to Pokemon? Do we think yes. Godzilla will be the legendary Pokemon in Sword and Shield? It's just Godzilla, <laughs> and, and if he gets counted as a dragon before Charizard does, mm-hmm. so help me God. God, Charizard, keep fighting that good dragon fight, buddy. We got you. We Dude, and your trainer Lance. Nuclear breath. <laughs> Do we think Detective Pikachu on Switch will be option A, just the sequel? Okay, essentially. Mm -hmm, Option mm -hmm. B, a combo of everything that came in the first one, which was a very good looking 3DS game and would look great just in HD. Or so a combo is option B. Option C is they will sell one and two separately. It's going to be... If I can chime in, it's going to be the first. Oh, sorry, Matt. Actually, this is a kind of a Danny Austin powerhouse Pokemon <laughs> Poke Master episode. Mute. Um, if you were ultra friends with us, at least on Pokemon Go, oh. you'd be welcome to. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, I, I have the power to stop this podcast. Right. <laughs> okay, I so will turn this around. Um, I think we've seen Nintendo do stuff like this before, where they're like, "Hey, this like here's the new bright and shiny thing. Buy it now." However. Here's the old version, or here's the old mm-hmm. like game for a uh, cheaper price. Uh, you can buy like, and maybe you can buy them both together, or buying one gives you a discount on the other. Um, yeah. I see them going that route, especially because it has it really hasn't been all that long since Detective Pikachu was out. I mean, we were talking about this last. This we were talking about Detective Pikachu as one of our very first episodes on this podcast. So, oh, um, bringing on back. Mm. I mean, that just seems like the Nintendo way. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I could maybe, maybe I don't know, Danny. What do you think? Um, I could. Yeah, I feel like they could do the combo. You know, they could do the you buy them one, you buy them both. Um, it's up to you. But if you buy them both, you know, you get this extra DLC or you get this like discount for buying them together. Um, I could also see them doing it like almost a year, maybe not a full year apart. Not like let's go into Sword and Shield, where that's like going to be a little over a year. I would say maybe like something like they announce a port of their first Detective mm-hmm. Pikachu like available by end of summer, and then like the sequel will come out maybe like early 2020 or something. If like that. I yeah, if I had to guess, I would say it's going to be a combos I'm going for. I don't think they have confidence. People played it on 3ds. Um, I kind of think it was a soft seller. It came out at the end of 3ds's life, and I would yeah. think um, that for the case of this, um, they'll both be available on Switch. I think it will be one package. And maybe even the, the, you know, they didn't say it's like a full sequel necessarily. So it could honestly be like a final chapter or something along those right. lines where you're playing the full game again. And then mm-hmm. you're getting maybe five to ten hours of extra. Um, but I do think both will be playable, which I think is a good move. In this conference, they said, uh, yeah. you know, hey, Pokemon's grown a lot thanks to Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Go, to which it's like, all right, guys, it's just Pokemon Go. Like, I, I would be very surprised if Pokemon Let's Go brought in, like, a ton of new fans. But, um, and I think this, though, has the capacity to be, if they were really um, Johnny on the spot, I think they would try and get Detective Pikachu out on Switch very soon, or maybe try to align it with the uh, home version release of Detective Pikachu when it comes to Blu-ray and try to get them out at the same time so that, ideally yeah. maybe you go you pick up detective pikachu and then you see you know a physical version of detective pikachu one and maybe two it or comes whatever with it is, a you know, limited down. edition mew card that'd be nice <sighs> how yeah. many can how many can i get it can be pre-ordered now yeah um, <laughs> and it also we also don't know how far along they did not say when to expect it um i should clarify that um they just said stay tuned for more info 
for all we know, they just started this like last month because they're like, oh, the movie's looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there so wasn't I, even like a Metroid Prime 4 style logo. I mean, there was not right. a picture of so a Switch. Maybe, maybe if they're like just starting development on it now and it takes another year or two, maybe it coincides with a sequel for the movie. Yeah, I, um, I got to think it'll be a great marketing be, campaign. I got to think we'll see it by the end of the year. I, um, if my, I have a yes. No. My uh, unsolicited thought <laughs> is that uh, I hope bother. that it's ac- I actually hope it's like episodic. I hope they bring that concept to the switch. And I'm really intrigued by that. Um, and maybe they roll out the first one. And then the second one is like, like they, you know, ep- you know, part two or whatever, whatever mm-hmm. it's going to be. But I, I like that concept. So yeah. that'd be fun. But just a, just a quick, like, uh, not really a tangent, but Nintendo, you know, with a uh, club, club, Ni- club Nintendo. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, uh, but if you are a, uh, a Nintendo online uh, subscriber, right, they have that deal right now where you pay a hundred bucks uh, or however much you're going to save $20 on. Yeah, it's it's like a hundred dollars and you get two vouchers yeah. for major right. Nintendo exclusives. And, I, and I, I just think that Nintendo is more and more experimenting with these types of deals through. Obviously, they're trying to incentivize like this online service uh and provide and more digital sales yeah right right but i, I just do th- i think we like keep, continue to see them just like toying with and trying out uh new ways to uh either price their games package them sell them so yeah um i know it, i wouldn't be surprised with any of those options that you listed if that if any i of have to happens. say like as far as um although nintendo is you know crafty with it and i like definitely did the voucher pass for um right for mario maker 2 july because, 30th yeah, and it's a totally a good deal because i oh, yeah. want to play mario maker they had a lot of news come out about it now i'm totally excited to play that excited to play uh co-op hopefully I play with you guys the um and then the voucher though it's like you can use that even on ultimate alliance 3 that's a fire emblem those games all accept like the voucher so there's like a lot of upcoming options it's a good deal, but I, I remember back on the 3DS and Wii U era, they did this type of thing too, where it was like, and I'm probably going to the game wrong, but they would do things where it's like, hey, if you buy Mutant Muds, for instance, on 3DS, you get the Wii U version, like $2 sure. less, like weird yeah. combos like that. And mm-hmm. um, I do, it is a thing, like even the vouchers, where it's like, I appreciate Nintendo is doing some type of sale thing because they don't tend to, right? Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, it's so complicated, right? Like on PlayStation, like if I wanted to get two games for a hundred dollars, I would buy the game I want and then, you know, wait two months after the release of the next game. And then, cause games are normally discounted to $40. Like right. it wouldn't be hard to get two new games for a hundred dollars in a simpler way than the voucher mm-hmm. thing. But, um, I do appreciate that they're at least playing with it. And, uh, I hope they don't make detective Pikachu too complicated. Uh, especially if we consider the movie is PG, you know, it's a kid's movie, like you said, Matt. Um, but just like really with a level of complexity, the only, you know, a really sharp 28 year old young man can really enjoy the finer <laughs> details of detective Pikachu in theaters now. But, um, I hope they don't make the packaging of Detective Pikachu too funky. I hope it's easy yeah. enough to get both and people love physical releases. It would make it again, a good thing on the aisle next to detective Pikachu, the movie when it comes out, Danny loves them and um, the plush toys and, and plush and all toys. That stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, please. I could just so, I could die. Okay. Into the uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm watching this thing now. Now I want the next announcement. What's next? Come on. All right. On. So next, um, and we will keep you posted on Detective Pikachu updates, um, is Pokemon Home um, yeah. coming in early 2020. So if, I could finally put all my Pokemon somewhere. Yes, all eight home, of them, Matt. They will actually be living, breathing, and uh, going to the bathroom in your apartment. Uh, I only had six. It's okay. a farm up north. <laughs> oh, oh, oh um, the, too soon. It's okay. So, so go ahead. Yeah, so Pokemon Home, if we think about it, it do we remember the Pokemon Bank uh, audience just briefly? It was right. you get your you I get a Pokemon. direct deposit into that uh, two times a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, we know it's more frequently Austin. We <laughs> totally know it's more frequently. And then you know, I go and check it out. I've, anything else I got, I put in there. And, it's at least yeah. twice a week. <laughs> Lemonade um, stand earnings, I dump into the Pokemon Bank. But uh, Pokemon uh, Bank was the idea, you know, you, you get your Pokemon, you earn it in, in uh, X and Y, you move it up to uh, uh, Sun and Moon, then you save it to the bank, and then whatever the next main line is, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, you can then move it back to those games. Mm-hmm. Um, so you didn't lose all that hard-earned effort from those earlier Pokemon, they can still stay with you. Right. So Pokemon Home is kind of like an, an expanded um, view of the bank. So Pokemon Home. 
a place where all Pokemon can gather. Expected to launch in early 2020, iOS and Android. The official statement reads, um, now trainers can bring all their Pokemon together with Pokemon Home, a new cloud service app that lets players continue their Pokemon adventures beyond a single platform. Yeah. Pokemon Home connects with Pokemon Bank, as well as Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee, um, the upcoming Pokemon Sword and Shield games, as well as Pokemon Go. With Pokemon Home, trainers can manage their collection of Pokemon across many of their games, plus they can trade with friends or anyone around the world directly using Pokemon Home via mobile service, or mobile device, excuse me. A potential future addition will even allow players in a single location to trade all at once. Mm. Um, so yeah. Pokemon Home, that's, that's pretty so why cool. Do you, so help me understand, why do you need Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home? Okay, I think like, Pokemon Bank is a thing of the past, I think is the answer. I think this is okay. the new version of that, because they were pretty cagey about Sword and Shield. They had said there would right. be a solution, but they had not specifically said, of course, there's no Pokemon Bank app on Switch, but on 3DS there's a, a tone app, right. Pokemon mm -hmm. Bank, and that was actually a paid service, where you paid just a couple yep. of dollars a year. Um, like to keep your Pokemon year, alive yeah. and happy and fed. And, and, and what is home? Home is it? It's free. So home Homes is like the better yes. version of, it sounds like it's the more thought out, more What's expansive version What's bigger than of a bank? bank? A home. Makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> What's happier than a bank? A home. A home. A um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, it sounds like it's a way to help those players who actually did invest in Pokemon Bank phase out of the bank. It's like, hey, your hard-earned dollars right. of $5 right. dollars a year Don't trust did not them. go to waste. 2008. Right. You know, and, and you'll get like you'll get like a few I don't know maybe a few months or a year move all of your bank Pokemon into home, um, and then they'll actually be able to live on forever in future games and so on and so forth. So I I quick yeah. I'm sorry quick question. So if you are now let's say like you know an uh, eight nine ten year old they they pick up the Switch Mini or whatever uh, and it comes bundled Confirmed. with Pokemon Shield <laughs> yep. and uh, <laughs> they're playing their first Pokemon game, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then what do they, if these are their first Pokemon, is it going to be like, okay, they can save that directly into the bay or into, into home. home. Yeah. Um, but for those that aren't, like for those that like have been playing, you know, since yellow and blue and red, right? <laughs> those are already, theoretically, those are already gone to time. So yeah. Like, is it easy mm -hmm. to grab all those, like all those Pokemon or is there's going to be a nice long process? To it's get extremely them not easy to do. So let me just go <laughs> a little backstory on this. So the, um, if you, this is definitely sounds like a much easier component to work with than Pokemon Bank. Pokemon Bank kind of mm -hmm. operated under old school Nintendo, which is like 3DS transfers. You could transfer from one to the from other. Game Boy to 3DS. A bunch of Pikmin yeah, will yeah. take it up. Exactly. So back, um, it does feel of that era. It's actually funny. So if you, it was possible to get Pokemon from like the Game Boy Advance games even into mm -hmm. your most recent like Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But the way you had to do it was, and get this, you had to put the Pokemon Game Boy Advance cartridge, okay, into your DS Lite, which still at that point had a Game Boy Advance slot, right? Which right, then could yeah. transfer into Diamond and Pearl through a transfer utility that was within the like the DS Pokemon games. All right, Diamond and Pearl, okay. Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and then from but then that's just the DS. We're not at 3DS era yet. So then to get those DSi, to, <laughs> DSi. Also, well, you could not do it with the DSi because DSi didn't have a Game Boy Advance slot. Yeah. So oh, like the, right. um, but basically, so you could get them at that point onto the DS, where then you could move them into, I believe, uh, Pokemon Bank existed to some capacity there, and then you could take your 3DS Pokemon certainly into Pokemon Bank. So you could by connecting to a DS Lite, you could get older Pokemon into it, but then they had to take an extra step to get back into. Uh, into that and so and then now if i wanted to say this is separate pokemon bank but pokemon home will connect to pokemon go the mobile game so mm -hmm. but pokemon currently if i wanted to connect my pokemon go to my switch which you have to do if you want meltan and you need a lot of meltan Obviously. to evolve him and uh, many of my friends who do not have a switch or do not have pokemon let's go um the normies out there, a la Matt, even though you're great the way you are. But if they want Meltan, then I they come to me. Normie. I take out my Switch. We connect the phone to my Switch. It takes just about two minutes. They transfer something to my game, and that gives them this item they use to sell in Meltan to their game for 30 minutes once now every three days. And um, so it's a whole kind of ritual. And when I'm at uh, some of these places where I work, where a lot of people play, people will be like, who who brought their Switch? Like, I need Meltan. Like, um, but that it's just very complicated to get everything in the same place. So right now yeah. the way it's going to work will uh, Pokemon home does seem like 
A, they didn't talk about price. I do hope it's a free service. It cannot be expensive to house these things. Mind you, like, I have a huge number of Pokemon in Pokemon Go, including, and I was going to do just some sweet Pokemon flexing right now, but including one ooh, wow, shiny wow. Lapras there from last Saturday's you Lapras monster. event. But the um, Pocket oh, Monster, 19, sir. It was born in 89. Um, it was born in 89. Swift. It's very wise. <laughs> the... Um, <laughs> But in the ancient in the in eighteen eighty nine for the record is what the thing is. <laughs> so, um, but in the case of this, it'll be nice to have everything consolidated. You know, Pokemon Go and Let's Go. It still operates that you take your Pokemon from Go into Let's Go, not the other way around, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Now that makes some mm-hmm. sense because there are more shiny Pokemon available you gotta earn in Let's those Go Pokemon. than there are in Go. Yeah. It's easier to get them in Let's Go. It's very challenging to shiny Pokemon in Go. And um, again, flexing that Lapras. So it was kind of like a weird, you can only go one way. And so if you trade something right. to Let's Go, it's never coming back. And so it kind of decentivized you from really trading anything of, of any significance. Um, but the, home is a solution for all of this. Home hopefully forward. will make this easier. Right. But, it's, but not home is not like suddenly, hey, you can link up your 3DS Pokemon games to home. Home is just like the moving forward, this is going to be our more seamless transition into a yeah. like a Pokemon graph- bank on so, every device. In the graphic so, board, did it show Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Pretty much sounds like if whatever you've moved over to bank from the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and backwards, um, it, it has to be in the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the so only way. So you got to go able- through the convoluted process to get it in the bank. But once it's in the bank, you can get yeah. it to home. And once it's in home, yeah, so moving the graphic forward, shows all three these Nintendo games. 3DS, Pokemon right, Bank, okay. connecting to Pokemon Go, connecting to okay. the Switch games. So it's about, it's about games. time. Yeah. It's good to see Nintendo and uh, Pokemon Company doing this, yeah. which is great. Yeah. I mean, it just honestly, uh, as you're talking about the, all this, I'm like, man, Poke- Pokemon's going to, at some point, there's going to be like, they will catch us, is what you're saying. They're gonna, ca- yes, deadly. The, well, yeah, the, the deadly spray, <laughs> deadly game. Um, but here's what I'm saying: is like, uh, who knows? In like 10, 15 years from now, people are going to have Pokemon they caught in whatever game. And we're going for the most that, dangerous game. Is that kind of the idea where the where the people, the guy gets hunted by the hunter, and he's like the most dangerous game? Is that the oh, but exactly. That? <laughs> the you just put the goggles on, and mm-hmm. then you, yeah, yeah. So the Pokemon sick. hunts you. Pokemon Watch out you. for that Blastoise. It's their time. Um, it's 2019, baby. Rise up. <laughs> But it's it's just really cool to see that like this company has been around for a very long time. They're still very successful, and that people one day could be playing with some of these Pokemon they've caught years and years ago into a future iteration of the franchise. And a in a and who knows what t- form that Pokemon will take. But I I don't know. I think it's cool. So it's cool to see that this is a solution to the backwards yeah. <laughs> bank. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's a dream come true, some would say. And uh, speaking my of dream, dreams, that is oh, nice. Yours is even better. <laughs> you like that segue? Yeah, it was good. Speaking of dreams, dreams um, on PlayStation Four. The next 4. biggest Check thing, out the which is going to take over probably the rest of this press conference talk, um, in one way, shape, or another. Believe it or not, it's called Pokemon Sleep. <laughs> This is a new feature. I'm, uh, this is no joke. Um, Pokemon Sleep um, is a new feature that will be implemented into the Pokemon Go series. Um, and again, all those benefits can eventually trickle down to the other games. But what it is, mm, similar to how okay. Pokemon Go made it popular and fun, and you can build community off of going for a long walk uh, and interacting with the it's world. totally what they were going for. <laughs> a lot of so, short drives. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> So sleep is the same thing, whereas you got points for how many steps you walk in Pokemon Go to hatch your eggs, to level up, all that good stuff. Sleep is this new thing where uh, the game itself, either via phone or another new device uh, in a second, will track your sleep. And you can reward your player, your Pokemon, via how good of sleep you get, how many hours of sleep you get. And this is a new feature that will be coming to the Pokemon Go uh, game. It's very um, much the Blue Ocean lifestyle Nintendo of 10 years ago. Now yeah, done yeah, with Pokemon. Yeah. Is yeah. there a Pokey Vitality sensor well, uh, that comes so with this? Sort it. of. Do you remember oh, <laughs> the Pokemon? Remember when Pokemon Go first came out? They had the Pokemon yeah. Go Plus, the little like clip yeah. you put on your book bag or carry on your belt or whatever. Pedometer, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So or now, maybe like you thing, have it on like a lapel or maybe like a collar right. or you have two right. cufflinks that are both. You have one big golden <laughs> chain, dozens of them. I'm talking <laughs> Pokemon Go Plus, Pokemon Gotcha. You have one Poke, Pokeball Go Plus, you know? And I hatch no are confused, less than 107 eggs respect. a day. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, okay, so there's a the new Pokemon version of Pokemon Go Plus was this big. There is yeah. now Pokemon Go Plus Plus, which is like a Not disc. a joke, I, Matt. That's the name. I'm not kidding it's on new, any of this. It's new Look up the image. 2DS <laughs> XL all over again. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, it's not like a bad translation. Like this no. is the <laughs> this is good as Pokemon gets, Go plus plus plus. plus. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, great. Plus the word and then the plus. Symbol. I mean, if plus is extra, then this is double extra. Yeah. It's not hard to figure so, out. <laughs> new okay. new XL. Mm-hmm. Um, so and it, it, it measures your sleep. So it can measure like the old one does. It can measure your steps, and you can put a Pokemon from the Let's Go games in there and walk around with it. I think. Um, and then on top of that, it measures your sleep. Um, and it's, they yeah, I, did this whole thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't know about putting Pokemon in it, but the, so it, it does, it gets extra confusing when you consider that there's already three existing Pokemon Go accessories. There's a Pokemon yeah. Go um, Plus, which is what we're talking about, which is a little clip right. you put on. Single and then plus. You, it spins Pokestops. You can hit a button. It'll throw a Pokeball at a Pokemon nearby. You get one shot of catching it. Um, that's the story of that. Then there's also the Gotcha, which is a, a Fitbit-looking device that's also officially licensed that will do the same thing, but it automatically attempts to throw balls. Oh, I forgot about Looks that Looks like one, a Fitbit. Yeah. I know. And then there's I I didn't know it until I saw one, someone at work who was wearing three of them, and I was like, you oh, show me your ways, because so I'm willing to wear four. And yeah, then he's also going to pass you a plus plus in the future. There's also the Pokeball um, plus. Pokemon Go yeah, yeah. Plus, which is cool. That one's which my is the ball. And, and so that I don't know. And that also does the things we talked about, but you can put a Pokemon in it for Pokemon Let's Go. You get experience for that. But um, it also has the cool look to the ball that can also be used as a controller in Let's Go. Now, I use that actually um, now every day. As your plus. Um, when I'm driving to and from work, because I'll sync it up in my, like, and when I get in the car. And then mm-hmm. as I'm driving, as a good way to encourage me to not be on my phone, it'll just vibrate automatically if I've spun a stop. And then it'll vibrate right. and you hit a button and you can throw a ball. And then when I get there, I can see, like, what did I catch? Um, so it's actually right. very fun for that reason. And the this new one looks the same to that. looks similar in size, but it's, like, one hemisphere. So it's, like, yeah, a half yeah, sphere because the idea is there's a flat edge you can set on your yeah. bed. Um, so it can measure your so, restless sleep as you're just tossing and turning, thinking about all those great moms. So you can... Get. Uh, dream and sleep mm-hmm. and go Pokemon. <laughs> Do Austin's dream of electric Pikachu's? Yes. And this the, is amazing of, because of uh, Mareep. <laughs> the first <laughs> thing that comes <laughs> to mind <laughs> is that it's nice That's to see good. Nintendo. It. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be a part of inside jokes. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, just a little something we've been working that on. Was kind a of cultural the pod. reference. <laughs> Not a. Uh, don't 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 mind me. It's um, called Blade the Runner. Point the point I'm making is I. <laughs> I think it's cool that Nintendo is doing this. It's I think it's a uh, it's very in right now. You mean all the cell phone companies and they're you know mm-hmm. uh, keeping you off your phone and doing ha- and like the making Digimons like- and the Pokemons <laughs> and the Pikachu's. <laughs> it's it's the health and wellness stuff you mean? Yeah. Pokemans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, all the health and wellness stuff and the focus on on that from big ten companies is really cool. And obviously yeah. Nintendo's doing a great job turning it into a game and yeah. making millions of dollars off it. And um, yeah. yeah, is this is there any sort of uh, is there any sort of like gotcha mechanic? Like, are they? Do you are you buying anything? We don't Is it know. really just we like we want you to if sleep you, and yeah, and 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 get benefited from it? No, it total sounds altruistic. Like, nothing evil about it. Don't right. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the first one time more actually where, they can gather off of us. Right. This is the first time actually when I was like listening to the Pokemon Company talk where I'm like, oh, the good heartfelt company that I never have mm-hmm. any sort of ill feeling towards. Why are they collecting all my data? What's going on? Mm-hmm. What happened to this company? I will say when um, it ended and they're like, we're also wearing Pokemon shirts for whatever reason for me with that. I'm like a bridge too far, guys. Like, even though there's no data collection <laughs> off of it, I'm just like, I'm already everything I own is already Pokemon. Like, you must also take the shirt off my back. Oh, That's now it. I will take size. all 150. I'm a 15 and a half by 32. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to be a 14 soon enough, so just stay cool. <laughs> and then go for a jog after this. So, so right. do you see people so, getting uh, addicted to this like form of gameplay then? Like, if, so, are you, Austin, are people at work going to be like, hey, can you uh, take my, my extra well, plus plus and sleep with it a couple <laughs> times? Mm-hmm. For I'll me. Say, say no more. I'll do it for pro bono. The, 
the, <laughs> so there's also a Snorlax event now in Pokemon Go, which is very well, exciting. I'm also going to flex right. with that. So tied in with Pokemon Go, we have now a Snorlax that is Did sleeping you when you kind of in the wild. He has Yawn, which does no damage as a fast move, so it's kind of a lol. But he also has Outrage. I've had this game running since the announcement. So, I still haven't found one. Yes, well, you know, if you want to be the very best, like no one ever was. The um, But in the case of this, Matt, the question for us is this. There's going to be a separate game called Pokemon Sleep, seemingly, that's developed by the people who made Magikarp Jump. So it's not oh, made by Nant. Right. So I we don't really know one. how it's going to yeah. be. So Magikarp Jump was an iOS game. It came out um, like a year ago. It's very cute and tongue-in-cheek and funny. Um, and you basically, it's just like kind of a tapping game and it has a good sense of humor. It's actually very, it's cleverly written for a Pokemon game. Games that don't often have stories that are very engrossing or characters that feel very real. Um, this is a fun iOS game. They're making Pokemon sleep. It'll also function with Pokemon go. So I don't know what exactly will shake out. Now I imagine you can play So let's take my sister. For example, she loves doing things on her phone that have check boxes. So she likes to, she has like calendar style things. She has like a daily meditation, a brain uh, age style thing. She does each day. She has these mm-hmm. things that she goes through and likes to kind of, uh, kind of, you know, back to the wellness type things she enjoys yeah so but one such thing that she does is to track her sleep patterns to see how much you know how much REM sleep does she have versus light sleep how much she toss and turn and so i imagine that pokemon sleep if you do not have the accessory you could just use by putting your you know the phone on your mattress next to you um yeah um but the so yeah, we don't right. know how that's going to work we just know there's going to be some reward for pokemon go currently the steps in pokemon go just they matt as you know you don't uh, play they incubate your eggs um and they opened they introduced adventure sync uh last fall which basically the game connects to like your uh health kit in the phone so like yeah so either apple right. kit or google fit yeah yeah so all the time because your phone collects your steps when you boot up the game it'll just sync to that so you don't need to be running the game to be incubating eggs so anytime you're moving around with your phone it's going to count towards that progress so hopefully it's something easy like that um right. and so anyway, honestly, I'm excited about it. And I was so right after the announcement, I pulled pulled over the car and I just said, yes, another Pokemon thing for me to buy. I cannot wait. Um, but the I went to a raid for Pokemon Go, which I've been doing a lot of recently with some friends. And um, there's a group of people locally who met up and I was telling them about it. And everyone's like, what? Like, you know, wild. What is this plus plus? But I have to say that I. I think it is cool. I think it's cool to build out the you world didn't and tell stuff about more. our podcast while you And I was at like, it. also another Nintendo podcast. Check it out. Check out the episode <laughs> coming up soon. Um, the hit that like button. <laughs> subscribe. Uh, I think it is. I think that for a lot of these people and myself, like Pokemon Go is a good motivator to move around. It's social for a lot of us, and um, yeah. I have a lot of fun with it. I'm hoping Nick can do something clever with this too. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, if 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 I were either of you or any Pokemon Go fan in the world, I'd be like, sweet, an opportunity to do what I've been doing during the time I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I get to now do nothing. So hopefully, poetic. do it well enough and wake up, and now there's more of the thing I liked because of I have to sleep. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think. I mean, it's it's like. I, I I would be just as as hyped as all of you. I can see why people are excited about it. Yeah, so. it's weird. Like, part of me is like, oh wow, this is so cool. The other part is like, it's kind of creepy. And then the other part of me is like, well, think about it. You know, they put this little counter, scrolling counter up. I don't know if you saw that, Austin. Of um, right before they introduced sleep, they're like, Pokemon Go. It's where we introduced all these people to get out and move and stay active and see mm-hmm. the world and interact with each other. And this whole time, they're like doing this little montage. There's this yeah. counter of like one kilometer, mm-hmm. step two kilometer. Oh, okay. And like it went up to like, I think a, a few billion and then they cut it off. It was still actively scrolling. Yeah. I think they were trying to show how many kilometers sure. uh, people have collected across the world. So I'm like, in that regard, on I'm the like, CTA on their bikes. And right, right. Trains. Um, and I'm like, so in that regard, <laughs> yes, it, it did get people to get out moving more. So like, I'm, I'm sure if it not a did, huge yeah. amount, like, you know, people got a, a few more steps a day, um, which maybe can add up so it danny seems, you were walking all over the city it seems I, appropriate. I, I, I am i mean I've, honestly i walk, seen a lot of the time i make a big point to hit my 50 kilometers a week and i'll jog or things if i know i'm short of it like to try to get back right. on track like i enjoy doing that and when i think about ios uh you know our next big ios update and even the most recent like when i think about screen time on our most recent ios yeah. update for people using iphones like there's a big effort to use your phones in more of a healthy way and I think about, I know we've all been involved in resident life for housing. And when I think about like residents I had, um, there it goes, weekly recording session, I assume. It's a little tough to read. They, um, screen time. <laughs> when, uh, 
when like residents I had back when I was in the engineering dorm as an RA, right? A lot of them were really into Pokemon and uh, some of the black and white games came out at the time. And a lot of my residents, you know, they would be up all night, you know, especially people, I think at that age, but also they were excited to play these games. I think, you know, the gamer lifestyle in general, not one that of course that encourages health. Um, and, <laughs> but I think about yeah. if you think like, if this is going to be a way to be like, all right, you're going to make progress, turn off your phone, you know, like, I find yeah. myself yeah, in yeah. bed often, often, like sitting, laying in bed before I go to sleep. And I'm just like looking at my, sometimes it's Pokemon collection, or I'm like browsing, let's say IGN or another yeah. Nintendo podcast, YouTube videos. Like, but like I'll kind of sit there and scroll through things that I've already probably seen throughout the day. Pokemon Go, if I'm laying in bed, there's nothing to do. Like, I, you have to be moving around to catch things and no Pokemon spawn in my house. I'm furious about it. But the, um, <laughs> right. But this would be a way to be like, okay, I'm going to now turn up my phone. I want to get to bed. You know, I was um, setting an alarm on my phone just yesterday and I was reminded of that bedtime alarm that you can set on iOS again that yeah. you can try to get yourself under sleeping. I've never used that. But this, or never used it for more than probably a couple of weeks. But this would be a way to be like, I want to make sure I get my eight hours. So I want to make sure my phone is off. It's going to keep me maybe honest to that because um, I'll make this yeah. little progress. Like I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a little summary about it. And, and to dive into a little bit more of the rest of the Pokemon sleep related things, uh, the president of Niantic came out really quick, just saying that they are also working on the P Pokemon sleep project. Um, you know, they'll say more to come in the future, but uh, just so you know, um, as Austin has already showed us, Snorlax is now available um, in the wild. Normally, you could you only used to get him in the raids. In he was the, in the raids. He I was think. in the wild too, but now he's just more and he's laying down yeah. the wild. So it's kind of fun, and he has some exclusive moves, which is the right. Fun. So yawn. So uh, that'll be going from from today. It's already active um, at the day of recording up until June third. So uh, get get your Snorlaxes while you can, kids. A um, couple other things, really quick. Um, we're moving away from Pokemon Sleep. Um, there was a rumored okay. another mobile game uh, that had been rumored for a couple weeks now from a group called DNA. That's mm -hmm. D E N A, um, and it's, it's uh, in your DNA. There it is, Dino so, DNA. <laughs> uh, uh, similar, Lush, yeah. I it's kind of like the Jurassic Park of a mm -hmm. Pokemon. Um, so it's called Pokemon Masters. Um, it is uh, a mobile game cool. for Android and iOS. It's literally just all of the. Looks like gym leaders, the characters, love the, it already. All of the NPC like masters uh, trainer Can that I... you played against in any of the previous games. Um, so there's Misty, there's Brock, um, there's, Hiker Joe, um, there's Surge. Swimmer there's Kate. we cannot confirm Hiker um, Joe at this time. Man. Yeah, can, well, uh, we haven't signed the contract with him, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. He's so all the all the big <laughs> gym leaders and then like your rivals um, from the previous uh, inst game installations. Um, it'll just be them with their starters um, versus each other all the time. So that was so, still pretty vague. Doesn't seem like there's too much info on it just yet, but that's that's what they gave so far. Presumably you're playing with your Pokemon Go like roster or what? what's the... Uh, again, they really only said it'll be those characters and their Pokemon. So whatever all of misty's pokemon that she has and whatever uh lieutenant surge all of his pokemon are that he has um and and so on and so forth i love it that's that's super nostalgic it's yeah, like it's a, really it's cool. like a, yeah and, and, and that goes goes for pokemon boss maybe fights. um Matt, you <laughs> yeah. can put in the image here but it has a really cool piece of cover art that even has red up there this helmet and our helmet mm -hmm. his hat the main character in this game a whole bunch of the pikachu that are uh oh that are seriously pokemon, like steven and thing people of that ilk that are yeah from the elite four that you will see on there that people with garchomp metagross like all these really cool poses it looks awesome in the game itself it shows like some i think three on three fighting briefly that looks good yep. and yep. um yeah you're gonna be able to like kind of socialize these characters meet them you wonder if there'll be some like kind of maybe small similar to animal crossing pocket camp possibly like some type of collection yeah. or friending element to them because yeah. dna is that company that matt you and i've talked about before but nintendo partnered with when they made their big mobile game announcement it's a Japanese-based company that has had tons of success in the mobile market that Nintendo, when they announced they're coming to phones, that, that was kind of a show of trying to, uh, I, I think, get investors uh, instill confidence little, that they're doing, yeah, new, they're working yeah. with someone who knew what they were doing. And were they, they the made, ones that did Super Mario Run? I don't know if they were associated with that, but they did do Fire Emblem Heroes and Animal gotcha. Crossing. So I think probably gotcha. games that had more little um, microtransactions and things like that that are more traditional mobile game style uh, yeah. versus Mario Run, which is the $10 flat fee. 
gotcha. the, uh, so in any event, interesting to see them working uh, in this capacity. Nintendo now owns, I believe, 10% of DNA. So it's um, obviously yeah. a connection they have. But the yeah. uh, I'm I'm honestly very excited for this. I sent when they announced like with the image, um, mm-hmm. I like to screenshot it on my phone and like sent it off to my friends because it's just like a really awesome dynamic image that really I did not hear that. Matt. He sent it to his friend and, oh, hmm. and, and on, it went to Matt. Oh, yeah. It's still I didn't, oh, it's uh, pending. It's sending. Oh, didn't the see um, that. <laughs> confirmed. Now. All right. Uh, thanks for listening to another Nintendo podcast. Um, but like it is and recording. It's these characters <laughs> forever. It's these characters that like you love in the games and you see them. For like five seconds, like you know, you for one yeah, yeah. gym battle, and like yeah. it was really fun. For example, in Gold and Silver, Koga, who is the poison gym leader in the original game, yep. He then in Gold and Silver, he's in the Elite Four, and I believe his daughter is then running the gym when you're able to return to the Kanto region. It's like a fun callback, and even Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, uh, they had Team Rainbow Rocket as like a fun end game thing where you could fight. Um, it's right. kind of Battle Tower esque, and Giovanni right. what, what kind of reappeared in that capacity, Ooh, but not without like a, he didn't have a huge story element to it, but it was just like a cool callback, which this probably will yeah. be as well. But I love that. There's when you look at the designs um, recently, like very big meme on the internet has been like the the tier lists of things, but people have had a fun time that I've seen like c- compiling different characters, like these are the best gyms, or these are the best you know characters, heroes, or mm-hmm. heroines, or whatever from the series, and the most of the design designs are so striking and because we grew up with a lot of them, they're very invocative of, at least for myself, like memories I had at the time, like we're getting yep. teeth pulled and then going to fight Blaine and things like that. When I was, you know, I have seven or eight, like, um, <laughs> vague memories. Can't can barely remember fake, it. <laughs> fake memories that were put in, but on the, I love those types of things where it's to see these characters again. It'll be cool to see how that game pans out. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, uh, I'm on board for that one masters. Um, and then the last bit from the press conference today, um, hey, we briefly mentioned it earlier, uh, Pokemon shirts. Everyone at the press conference today had one of these officially licensed and, and manufactured shirts from this, uh, clothing manufacturing company called original stitch. Currently it's only in Japan and a few other, uh, East Asian countries, but it'll slowly be expanding to North America and Europe. Um, so be on the lookout for, uh, your next button down you dress shirt with previously? Pikachu's all over. I thought I like had seen it. I just figured that yeah, was like a couple something months they've ago gotten off. They show they're, they're yeah. really cool. Like they're mo- there's one for th- every of the original 151 and they're very yep. subtle. So it's like yeah. some of them are all, you know, different but like sometimes it'll be just like a, a normal pattern shirt, but then if you look right, closely from- it's like oh there's like little slow bros in there or like the design makes <laughs> right. up these um you know there's one it just things of that nature, like oh, it looks like a woodblock yeah. thing. Oh, it's Magikarp's in there. Like it has. I'm looking cool. forward to the Tangela one. So it's a it's a really awesome good time, time to be a sure. Pokemon fan right now. It really it's is pretty much. Yeah, um, it's it's really a kind of a golden age. You get, I mean, there's so much great stuff happening. Uh, and actually, um, what I was was going to ask you was, I thought that there was a controversy with this whole T-shirt thing. Wasn't there some sort of like fan like wasn't there like fan submissions oh, for is. this is a slightly different story, but we can't touch on this briefly. So okay. um so these shirts are also dress shirts. They're very cool, but they're not like um the thing the story that you're alluding to. Like these graphic are, tees. Yeah, these okay. are not graphic tees. Um they're like okay. dress shirts, they look cool, and I will be I'll only I mean probably like thirty or so. I don't need all of them. <laughs> the um no, they are cool. But okay, so there was a separately we can transition on to briefly ending the episode of Sword and Shield uh, as we have the direct coming up, as we've talked about. But there was a controversy recently because Uniqlo, uh, the co- clothing brand that does a lot of kind of soft t-shirts and whatnot that has had Nintendo partnerships in the past. I actually have a Magikarp shirt and some Splatoon apparel. Um, the Anyway, they have had cool partnerships with Nintendo and they have had one with with Pokemon. And so the Mm -hmm. kind of the way it worked was there are all these designs. You can look at the winners uh, for Uniqlo uh, and just people who it was all fan made. And then the winners are now things you can buy to wear in real life. Um, But the grand prize winner, part of the prize was $10,000. And also your shirt was going to be featured in Pokemon sword and shield um, as Mm -hmm. a a Mm -hmm. piece of clothing that your main avatar could wear. Right. So the winner of that, it's a design that had um, like a, a Gyarados and Magikarps, and they had this kind of cool blockish design. I'm not really sure what it's inspired by, but it's a, it's a cool looking design. Um, but in any event, was disqualified. And part of the controversy was that 
he was disqualified because it was a design he had submitted to other competitions in the past and apparently had won four. And so it was kind of resubmitting. Uh, it was supposed ha, to be like ha, an ha. original design, which for just for this competition, which does seem honestly a little strict because if he did design the last one, I don't, I mean, whatever. I feel yeah, like it isn't really a like, big deal, but that was against design. the terms of the competition. Yeah. And then he tried to like bat it off and being like, no, 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 like it's my design, but I never submitted it for that competition. Someone else like stole it off my uh, portfolio online and then won that competition, but it wasn't me. So I've never won a competition mm. with it before, which ended up not being true. So that I'm sure really sunk any chances of that. So anyway, the shirt's being removed yeah. and no one's getting the prize. So it's a bummer of a story. Yeah. And that is it. All right, so that's uh, all we have for the press conference. We are actually going to do our hopes and dreams and predictions for Sword and Shield that guard the realms of men in the next right. episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so stay tuned for that, and we will see you uh, then. So uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, share it, all that good stuff. Wow. Find us on all your podcast channels. Ring the bell. Um, and we will, the we will see you then. Bye. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another another Nintendo podcast. My uh, name is Danny Tortelli. I am your host today. I am joined is by it? Austin Cummings. Uh. <laughs> yes, uh, that is Austin. And Matthew Schultz. Uh. <laughs> Who are okay, we? Do we do one? Are do we, we part of AMP? Should we do it from this, like, what's top one more time? I always feel like we get good energy going. <laughs> I like that one, but uh, please save that audio for something. Okay. okay. Yep. There we go, Danny. Are, just... are, are we stopping our recording? No, no, no. In, we'll in... Keep the recordings okay. going and then uh, just start us over <laughs> okay. one more time. Very good. You can look forward to this at the end of the episode. <laughs>